Hello, people on the internet watching car-related internet videos. Welcome to this. My 1974 RA21 Toyota Celica that will soon be powered by this high compression cammed fully forged NA2UZ V8 out of my dad's total Toyota Tundra pickup. Getting back to work where I left off in the last video, since I did have three 2UZ engines that I'm mitch matching parts from, like these valve covers that I cleaned up. This is the one instance where I wish I had an air compressor in this shop. Genuine Toyota parts. Somebody had already replaced these spark plug tube seals at one point in time with some generic aftermarket ones that are inevitably just going to leak because they wanted to save an extra couple few cents. See how soft and squishy this is? And how nice and firm this is? This is a brand new genuine Toyota one. This is a aftermarket, probably not that old, replacement. That is crap. That's gonna leak. It's a misconception that a rubber seal should be nice and soft. There's a delicate balance between being too soft and too hard. If you're new and you like to get caught up on the last video where I worked on this project, up above my head is maybe a link to that video or also could be 10 ways to tell your grandmother that you don't like her pants. <laughs> Obviously, if I'm gonna spend all that time cleaning up these valve covers to make them look new and putting new seals on there, I have to make sure it's installed with some fresh, new-looking hardware. Hi, Focus. To brighten up the hardware, I gave it a quick bath in my ultrasonic cleaner with some mild degreaser so it wouldn't harm the zinc finish, and then also replaced all of the rubber-bonded washers from the factory as well. Being a stickler for attention to detail, I discovered something about my coil packs for this engine. Because I have three 2UZ engines, two of which are VVTi and one is not, I looked at the part number on all of the coil packs, and the non-VVTi 2UZ coil packs are not compatible with the VVTi 2UZs, according to Toyota. As much as I'd love to buy eight brand new ones, um, I'll see if they're good first. Which I'll actually be able to do once I get the new ECU in by doing a functionality test. Now you can see this one's got a giant crack down the side of it. And that one's no longer good, so I can't use that one. As is this one, big crack. This one, the body is fine, but the boot is all dry rotted. Out of 16 coil packs, I have 11 that are actually serviceable. Just to make sure things are uniform, I'm gonna change out all of them so they're the same exact part number. The uh, next item is not my lunch. While it might look like a gun that belongs in front of a Star Wars spacecraft, it's actually a BBTI solenoid, which is disgusting and needs to be cleaned before it goes in my engine. 275 thou, that's a car. Might wanna hang on to that one. And just like that, freshly cleaned and lubricated. Whilst I was testing the mutation rate of fire ants with brake clean. I promise I'm not testing mutation rate of fire ants with brake clean. Okay, left, right. That's this one. Adding up the price of all these sensors, you can kind of get an idea of why new cars cost so much. On this side, unfortunately, I have a broken bolt that was not removed by the machine shop. So, oh man, come on. That should be center. I had a really nice high-end metal drill bit set, but conveniently, all of my tiny bits are broken. Whoa, it's turning. Maybe I don't need to drill it out. Oh, it's coming out. That's wild. I can tighten it and pull it out. It wouldn't come out the correct way when it broke. That's luck. That was absolute luck. It's almost out. There you go. If you're a dentist watching this right now, is that how you feel when you extract a bad tooth? Because that's how I feel. It's a robot tooth. Perfect. I don't even need to tap it. That's not what he said. Man, I saturated this thing in oil. Jeez, that's a tight fit. And of course, there is another broken bolt that the machine shop didn't remove. This one for cam position sensor. The key to successfully drilling out broken off bolts in an engine is to one, have quality drill bits, two, know what the f you're doing, and three, have hand-eye coordination. If you don't have all three of those, then don't even try. M6 by 1.0 maybe, yep. I mean, it might tap, uh, I don't know if it's gonna work. This thing's pretty wore out. The irony of the fact that I stressed about having quality drill bits, yet I'm using the cheapest tap and die set possible. All that work was for this, the cam position sensor. The moment of truth. Will this hold 66 inch pounds of torque? Yep. 
I gotta do this, whether I have all the parts or not. I gotta keep moving forward. Cookies. It might not seem like a big deal, but this is actually gonna be the first time the entire point of this whole project is gonna happen. The motor mount brackets are just lightly tacked up for now. I have to add a little tiny hootenizer on the sides and then get them powder coated. That can't go like that because of the way that it is. But this one can't go like that either because of the way that it is. They can only go one way. Also, I'm just using some random old bolts for the mock-up because I don't want to scratch my freshly re coated ones until it's ready to go together for the final time. As much as I wish this would be the last time I'd be putting an engine back into this car. Stendomatic. The engine has to come out one more time to paint the bay. Hello, my name is Ballast. Ooh. Come on, get the slack out. Smooth brain pliers and adjustable hammer. L literally all this stuff is a different size. I'm not going to grab 10 different size wrenches to do this. Genuine Toyota gasket. A smidge of oil around the rear main seal here. Good. Welp, this is it. Oy. Oh, hell yeah. Look at all that room for the AC compressor. I can keep AC in this thing. The laws of common sense would say that because there was a 2UZ in here before, that this 2UZ would also fit the same. But the laws of carpentry say differently. I finally got the right engine in the car. It has arrived. I've been waiting for this box for two weeks. And it contains a new old stock genuine Toyota Lexus bracket. Cornelius. Cornelius. You have no idea how much it was driving me crazy not having the left side bank plastic covers over the timing belt. What is happening here? But because I'm not running a clutch fan on this engine doesn't mean that it doesn't get the fan bracket. This fan bracket is vital for the routing of the serpentine belt. In my blue zinc bag should be the rest of the hardware that I had redone for this. Smell that smell. 106 millimeter, 12 mil head, 12 pound feet. 106 millimeter, 106 millimeter. 106 mil, winner, winner, that's the bolt. A little tech tip, when you're getting hardware re coated and it goes all in a giant vat together, you would think it'd be impossible to figure out what bolt came from where, but because of the fact that the Toyota Tech Data has the measured length of each bolt as well as the head size, you can figure out what bolt goes where. It's kind of the same situation as when you're working on a jammer or MA2 that has to touch spicy things. You gotta make sure every single bolt is in accordance with the one in the TO. Fig Newton meters just kinda, I don't know, hardware, the like pound feet. I use metric for everything else, well, except for temperature. Don't tell me it's 16C outside. I don't know what the hell that is. This was the original timing cover for the left side cam on my dad's engine. And unfortunately, when he hit the moose, it smashed it. The inside of it is all full of moss because it sat for so many years. I want to use the decal off this one because it's perfectly legible, but it's got two tears on it. And also if I try to transfer, it would probably destroy it. And as you can see, the one from my junkyard engine, the label is a little bit bleached. However, it's free of cracks. Bicycle. I gotta go use the sink. If one day I'm able to have a shop of my own, I will design it as such that I have a sink in my workspace for cleaning parts. I would say that passes the cleanliness test. Using the rubber grommet from the engine from New Hampshire since it's still soft and not dry rotted. I definitely do not want to drop that screw down inside there. I'm gonna stuff a bag. Perfect. This bag out from there. It's supposed to be a stud in here. I had the wrong hardware. It's satisfying knowing that every single one of these bolts is the correct bolt per Toyota. It's all too spec. And this clip goes in there and it flips towards the center. I have an AC compressor, but it looks like it was attached to the underside of a boat for a century. So I'm gonna have to order a brand new Denso 
one. Now this guy, that goes right there. 21 pound feet is 29 newton meters, and there's a pretty good picture of the nuts. So I, I'm gonna shut up. Can I do it with just sheer grip alone? I got 14. <laughs> there's one. There we go. So some of you in the past video that I did on the Celica mentioned that this thing was gonna be impossible to turn because of the fact that I don't have power steering. Allow me to dispel that myth for you real quick. Three fingers. Well, a thumb is not a finger, but you get it. That's all the way to lock. Keep in mind, this is a sticky 200 treadwear tire. See how I'm turning the steering wheel right now? With one hand, that is with the engine in the car. That is not a difficult. Carefuling, nerve racking, moving stuff around in here. There's a big difference between a properly sorted manual rack and a car that's supposed to have power steering that just stopped working. What commences next is my personal favorite part of a project. Best way in which to do this is to take the Celica's wiring right here, which is pretty much just for the gauges. There's not a lot of wires here. This right here is the harness from a 2005 Sequoia. It's in a big mess. These all go to ECU. There's absolutely two ways I could have done this. One, I could have just did a standalone wire and harness like I did in the MR2 from scratch. Or B, use the Toyota engine harness from the factory and modify it to work. So that bank goes there, it goes here. Just to prove this theory to myself, okay, so all that stuff goes down to like the AC compressor crap. I know this looks like an absolute rat's nest nightmare, but it's really not that complicated. At least I don't think so. I don't find wiring that challenging. That guy goes like that. That's a temp sensor, I gotta sneeze. Hey, <laughs> Tui! My first quill go there. Quill number three, I want that routed around. That goes in the valley of the block. And the seven, five. Engine water temp, okay, so it goes right there. Quill six. This is why I'm conflicted. All of this extra mass that you see in the valley of the block and all this right here, this is for the ECU and the fuse blocks. That's all excess. In the trucks, there's this giant black plastic connector that attaches to the back of the block right here that all this wire is encased in, but I can't utilize that because it'll hit the firewall because this car is so much smaller. The other issue is the hole for all this wiring to go to where I'm gonna route the ECU. Those of you that have done something like this before know the dilemma I'm in. And the dilemma is because I'm trying to do this clean and I don't want to cut wires multiple times to change their lengths and reroute them because the engine bay is physically different. That's what she said. Welcome to the following day. I did some thinking last night. I know it might seem like an unhealthy obsession to make sure everything is original parts, but I, that's the whole concept of this build, is to have it an OEM Plus Resto mod. And that goes for wiring too. I just wanted a nice clean factory harness. But then again, I, that's 20 year old wiring on that harness and it came from an unknown junkyard engine. So it's like, why would I go through all the work to rebuild the engine, rebuild the entire car, and then just throw a harness from a junkyard on it? There could be very well be a bunch of wiring issues with that harness that I'm not aware of, which I kind of doubt. I promise this is gonna make sense in a second. You're probably wondering what I'm doing right now. So with that said, the thinking that I did last night uh, involved me purchasing the wire and harness just like I did on the MR2. I'm literally gonna do the exact same process I did to that car with wiring to this thing. Why does masking tape smell so good? It shouldn't smell so good. This probably seems extremely ridiculous what I'm doing right now. And that's because you're partially right for insinuating that. Do you see what's all over the top of this car? That is thick dust. Do you know what happens when you rub up against that? If you do not wash your car mid-restoration, we are not on the same level. That might be a good thing for you and a bad thing for me.
That is such a pretty color. Now seeing it with water on it, I can only imagine when this thing is nicely cut and polished. So much dirt, crazy. By use of telepathy, I'm answering your comment about if I'm going to cut and buff this thing and the answer is yes, probably with an interface pad and a DA since it doesn't have any dirt nibs in it. There, no more dust, much better. Normally I don't like explaining stuff in videos, I just do it and do the work, but I felt this was important so you can see a little bit of the decision making process behind the scenes and how I'm choosing to do this. Shout out to Jimmy Oaks for overnighting me the wiring harnesses for this car. He's a distributor of ECUs and stuff. I should have the harnesses tomorrow for this thing so there won't be really a, a delay in the progress. Ouch! Of course I threaded every single one of these nuts onto the studs. I need to do this now so I can see my clearance for the AC compressor and doing a remote oil cooler on this thing. I'm trying to do this with the steering shaft connected. So if need be, these springs right here allow me to separate the merge collector and install each one of these pipes individually. Purely for curiosity's sake, can it be done with the steering shaft connected? Ooh, me, me, no, <laughs> no. Either take the header apart or take the steering shaft out. What do they call that where you kind of tell what's gonna happen in the beginning without telling what's gonna happen? I gotta sneeze. It's called a uh, foreshadow. I swallowed my sneeze. I haven't foreshadowing what is coming in the next video because I grossly miscalculated how much time I had left today. With the harnesses on the way, I can route them exactly where I want them, which is going to be the opposite side of the engine bay is the Tundra. It should be on the other side for the Celica, and that's the way I want to do it. I don't know why I was going to try to use a factory. I know why, but I, you needed to see this mental battle. I'm making the right choice. I'll make this clean and OE looking regardless. Anyway, thank you guys for watching. I'll see you soon with another video. Bye!